never tells me, anyone asks me the what am I? Am I belong to group A or group B or group C? And that reminded me of an of an incident that after 9/11, when I went to America in 2003, I went to Los Angeles. And after 9/11, you know, it was more difficult for the Muslim to cross the immigration. And I having a beard, wearing a cap. I'm a soft target. And the reason I wear this cap and the beard, it gives me opening to do dawah. So when I went uh, to the immigration, and they asked me a question, that, who are you? I said, I'm a Muslim. No, which sect do you belong to? I said, there is no sect in Islam. I'm a Muslim. They asked me, are you a Wahhabi? So I told him that, Al-Wahhab is one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bestower. I'm a follower of Allah and Al-Wahhab. In that way, I'm a Wahhabi. No, no. Are you that sect? I said, no sect. I'm a Muslim. And these people, they are trained. You know, I've been to the Western world. I've even given lectures to the police in UK and different parts of the world. Muslim country, non-Muslim country, India, Bahrain, many parts of the world. And in the Western country, they are trained, you know, that how to identify. Okay, a person is wearing trousers above the ankle, you know, he's a Wahhabi. Person has a beard, he's a Wahhabi. You know, after he goes into Ruku and keeps his hand on the chest, he's a Wahhabi. I said, I don't keep my hands on the chest, I keep it down. Now, what do you mean by Wahhabi? Wahhabi, if you mean a person who follows Al-Wahhab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, I'm a Wahhabi. But if you say I belong to a particular sect, only name, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, he says the only name you can call yourself is Abdullah or Muslim or what Allah has given in the Quran. I asked them the question, what was the beloved prophet? Which sect did he belong to? Group A? Group B? Group C? What was he? He was a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse number 52, that Isa was a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 67 that Ibrahim alayhi salam was not a Jew or a Christian, he was a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in Surah Fusilat chapter 41 verse number 33, the verse that changed my life. It says that Waman Ahsanu kalla mimman doila lahi, wa'amil salihaun. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. So when anyone asks me what am I, I say I am a Muslim. There are so many sects that the Muslims have been divided into. In the Quran, Allah says call ourselves Muslim, not with any other name. Yes, if you belong to an organization, if you have passed from Medina and call yourself Madni, if you have passed from Deoband and call yourself Deoband, I've got no problem. But as a label, the only label you can give yourself is Muslim. What was the beloved prophet? You are the Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, which I call it as the master key for Dawah and also as a master key for speaking to different groups of Muslim. It says that, Kul Yahal Kitab, say your people of the book, Ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as will us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. Wala nushrika bi shayyon. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhiz abad dun abad dan arba bin mirindin illa. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. Fa in tawallaw. If then they turn back. Fa kulu shadu. Say he bear witness. Bianna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah. Yeah, Allah says, give shahada. You bear witness that I am a Muslim. Bowing my will to Allah. And this is the master key for doing dawah. And that's how when I speak to a Christian, I tell him that let us come to common terms between you and us. What is common in the Bible, let us agree to follow. What is not common, we will discuss tomorrow. Right or wrong, we'll discuss tomorrow. So I prove from their Bible 
that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never claimed divinity. I prove from their Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. I prove from their Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, many of them, Allah gives hidayah and they accept Islam. Those who are fanatic, they say Zakir is causing differences. When I speak to the Hindu, I say, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa in bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as we'll assign you. What is different, we will discuss tomorrow. Let us agree to follow what is common. And from the Hindu scriptures, from the Vedas, from the Upanishads, from the Bhagavad Gita, I prove to them that God is one. Quoting the scriptures in Sanskrit. I prove to them from their scripture that the last and final avatar to come is Kalki avatar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's mentioned my name in the Hindu scriptures. He's mentioned that father's name will be Abdullah, Vishnu Yas. Mother's name will be Sumati Amina. Now when I prove, Alhamdulillah, many Hindus are accepting Islam. Fanatic Hindus say, Fanatic Hindus say, oh, Zakir is bringing discord. I said, what discord? Point out one thing which I have said against the Hindu scripture. I may say against your culture. I may say against your wrong belief. I can give a lecture on differences between Islam and Christianity, but I never do that. I can give a lecture, differences between Islam and Hinduism, I don't do that. Because Allah says, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as we'll assign you. Which is the first term? Allah nabda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. And when you hear my lecture, I have quoted their scholars. Their scholars who say that idol worship is wrong. I am quoting their scriptures. Now when I quote scriptures, and telling that your scripture and our scriptures have got similarities, they go and tell many people, mashallah, except Islam. Hundreds of them, thousands of them, alhamdulillah. But those who are fanatic, they say Zakir is bringing discord. I said, okay, come on a comment platform, get your scholars, we'll have a discussion. Get your scholars and believe me, I only quote the scriptures with references in Sanskrit. Same thing when the Muslims differ, I say same thing. Come to common terms as we us and you. And the Muslim Ummah, our main common term is Atiullah, Atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So if all the Muslims agree today that we will not fight over small issues, over trivial issues, and if there is a difference of opinion, you go back to Quran and Sunnah. Ask the person, where does the Quran say this? Where does the Hadith say this? Most of our Muslims will say, no, my Sheikh says this. My Maulana says this. Alhamdulillah, we respect the Maulana. We respect the Sheikh. We respect the Ustad. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 59, Atiullah, Atiur Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those that have been charged with the affair. Talking about the scholars. Allah does say, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those that have been charged with authority. But the verse does not stop there. It continues. But if they differ, if the scholars differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul. If the scholars don't differ, all of them say pray five times a day, we don't have to ask Allah, check in the Quran and Hadith. Because our Prophet said, my Ummah will never be united on disbelief. If all say give zakat, we don't have to. But if someone says two different things, what do we do? Qul hatu purana, is your proof. And check with the Quran and Sunnah. And once you check with Quran and Sunnah, believe me, more than 95% or more than 90% of your differences will be solved. Now the 5-10% the differences that will remain because of different interpretation of hadith are minor differences. It's not differences worth fighting over. That's the reason in the Quran Allah said earlier that Allah said that 20 Muslims are equal to 200 kuffar, disbelievers. Later on Allah says 1000 Muslims is equal to 2000. Why? Previously, 20 was equal to 200. 10 times. Then it became 1000 to 2000. 
first less thousand Muslims get together, that is only difficult. <laughs> so here we realize that because of our disunity, our power, our our goal. So with this in mind, mashallah, I met the head of the Medina University of Hadith Department, Dr. Zayar Aman Azmi, and we came with a project about more than 15 years back. And after Sheikh Zayar Aman Azmi retired, we came with a project of compiling all the Sahih Hadith together in one set of volume. And after 15 years, mashallah, he has just last year completed.